Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next is charge on colloidal particle. Please understand this topic a little uh, carefully, a little uh, critical topic. See, the colloidal particles will always carry electric charge. And please, one thing, they will always carry the golden rule let me write here. So one thing is the colloidal particle, this is the colloidal particle, it will always carry some charge. One thing is particles always carry some charge. Right? And the second thing is they all bear identical charge. For example, in this case, if I have a colloidal solution with n number of or millions of colloidal particles, all the colloidal particles will have same charge. Maybe all will have positive charge or will have negative charge. And because of this, they repel each other. Right? So since if you see this is a colloidal particle, this is, if this is neutral, it will settle down. But if it, if it has caused positive charge, this another po colloidal particle which is also positive charge, they will repel each other. And with this also, they will not settle down. Now the question is from where this charge came? Because colloidal particle, please note this is not a colloidal molecule. This is just a particle. For example, here, this is a charcoal right charcoal adsorbs gas right similarly colloidal colloidal particle adsorbs charge it adsorbs charge but the question is from where this charge has come right see this charge sometimes comes from the electrolytes or from the electron captured by sol particles during Electro dispersions. We have seen that electro dispersion method to create uh, this uh, colloidal particles. So during electro dispersion method, electrons are dispersed also. This so these electrons are captured sometimes, right? These are also called by preferential adsorption of ions from solution. As I told, if it has electrolytes, example is. Colloidal particle has some electrolytes. As I told, some electrolytes are required for the stability of salt. These electrolytes, for example, I have NaCl, will have Na plus and Cl minus. Now, there is something called preferential adsorption of ions. So, this preferential adsorption of ion behavior is shown by colloidal particles. So, for example, I have Ag. I here. This AgI collides will have preference to adsorb either Ag plus or I minus electrolytes. So if my colloidal solution has an electrolyte, for example, AgCl, then AgCl will give Ag plus and Cl minus. This Ag plus will be adsorbed by this colloidal particles. If I have uh, electrolyte of NaI, it will give Na plus and I minus. And then, then in that case, I minus will be adsorbed by this colloidal particle and it will get negative charge. Right? So there are various sources. The first source, as I told, was due to electron capture by the sol particles during electro dispersion of metals. The second is the preferential adsorption of ions by this colloidal particles from the salts. Right? There are so many examples for this. For example, if you take arsenic sulfide, right? So it has uh, preference to adsorb either AR3 plus or S2 minus ions. So if you have S2S excess, then S2S will give H plus and S2 minus ions, and S2 minus ions will be adsorbed. Right? And this preferential adsorption is the most preferred accepted reason because these are all the reasons. See, adsorption of charge happens, right? This colloidal particles has charge. This is a fact. This happens. This can be seen experimentally. Now, how it happens? There are so many theories to prove it, right? So there's theories saying that due to uh, the first theory says that the electrons are captured by the sol particles during electro dispersion. The second theory says that there is something called preferential adsorption of ions from salts. I don't know why it is uh, AGI has preference for Ag plus and I minus only. I don't know that, but there is. It, it is there. There may be some theories to explain that also. But that is also one theory. The third theory talks about uh, formation of electrical double layer also. It says that there is a positive charge here, right? For example, my AGI, AGI has adsorbed all the Ag plus here, right? Now in the system, I had uh, AgCl. 
correct AgCl. I have this. Let's suppose this AgI collide particles. I have AgI particles, and this electrolyte I am adding is AgCl. So AgI will adsorb all this Ag plus. Pink one is Ag plus. So this plus charge will also now attract, form a second layer called of uh, alternative charge. So here I add Cl minus electrolytes also Cl minus ions also. This Cl minus here in this case will form a second layer. And this Ag plus will form a first layer. So in this case, my first layer is stable, right? You can't even wash it off so easily. But the second layer is little uh, not that strong, right? You can, uh, it is not very strong actually. You know, it goes off and comes back like that. Again, there are theories, right? This is a double layer theory. It says that AGI or any colloidal particle will adsorb ions based on the preferential adsorption. It will carry a positive or negative charge here first layer will be positive or negative based on the preference and based on the uh, ions in the electrolytes or ions in the whole solution it also formed the second layer and that that is to show that everything is neutral i mean just a theory double layer theory correct the fourth theory which talks about the source of charge is the dissociation of surface molecules so here, for example, soap in water, it says the cation is passed into solvent and anions segregate to form miscellaneous. This is also a fourth uh, explanation for the source of charge, but the best and the possible explanation is the preferential adsorption of the ions. There are so many examples for preferential adsorption. For example, is I have AGI as the colloidal particle here. Sorry, AgNO3, let's suppose. Well, let's say some saw, let's say some, let's say AGI only. In AGI, now if I add AgNO3 electrolytes, so in that case, AGI will adsorb Ag plus. Correct. And in this, let's suppose if I add Ki, K plus I minus, AGI will have a reference to adsorb I minus. Okay. And as far as double layer concept as I told, so it, it talks about the composition of two layers of opposite charge around this colloidal particle. Right? This is called helm hoss electrical double layer. Correct. The first layer, if you see, it, it, as per this uh, uh, theory, the first layer is firmly held. As I told, this first layer is firmly held and is called fixed layer. The first layer is fixed layer. This is firmly held. This is called fixed layer. And the second layer is mobile, actually. And this is called diffuse layer. This is mobile, it can move. Right? And there is a potential difference between these two layers. Because why? Because there is opposite charge, this plus charge, this minus charge. So there has to be potential difference. And this is called electrokinetic potential or zeta potential. Zeta potential. Or electrokinetic potential. That is the concept of double layer. So if you see, want to see some of the positive salts, positive salts, we have my basic dye stuff, hemoglobin, oxides are my positive source, negative charge source if you see, they are co uh, metals like copper, silver and gold source or AS2S3 is also in the uh, metallic sulphides, negative charge source or eosine, red source, gum, starch, gelatin, they are all negative source. So we have negative source means uh, the particles has a negative charge. And positive source means the particles have a positive charge. See, colloids have charge on them. In fact, they are not charged. The colloid, please note, see, in colloidal particles, the charge is adsorbed, right? It's adsorbed on the surface. So, technically, if you see the colloidal particle as such, it has charge because the charges are adsorbed on the surface. 
similar to the fact that the gas is adsorbed on the charcoal similarly the charges are adsorbed on the colloidal particle we know this how do we confirm this what is the proof this can be proved by electrophoresis experiment to do this what we do is electric potential is applied across two platinum electrodes is the platinum electrode platinum electrode is the electric potential applied and this is dipped in the colloidal solution so this blue one is my colloidal solution right now let's assume this is my particle the colloidal particle which is surrounded with a positive charge so it looks positive right but this is my colloidal particle so what happens the moment electric field is applied you have seen that the colloidal particles are deposited on one electrode right so if it is positive colloidal particles it will be deposited on this electrode the one with a negative charge if it is a negative colloidal particle you will see that everything get deposited on this electrode the one with the positive charge so this movement of colloidal particles under the influence of electric potential is called electrophoresis so what is electrophoresis the movement of the the this plus one is not a charge this is a colloidal particle with a positive charge right so this the movement of colloidal particle under the influence of electric potential is called electrophoresis so it's a positive colloidal particle it moves towards cathode if it's a negative uh, colloidal particles then it would have moved in this direction towards anode right now if you restrict the movement of uh, this uh, movement uh, particles using some membrane then you'll have something called osmosis we will we'll discuss this right electro osmosis now if this movement of this particles from hair to hair left right if it is restricted using a membrane so this membrane again is the same animal membrane which will allow impurities to pass through but it will not allow my colloidal particle to pass through so impurities it will pass but the colloidal particles it will block very good colloidal particles are being so when the movement of particle is prevented by the suitable means it is observed that my dispersion medium for example in this case water begins to move in this direction right and this phenomena phenomena is called electro osmosis if you see the water particles will move in this up direction actually in this up direction and this is called electro osmosis thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again